a poem that, as you know, is called The Divine Comedy. It's not really the title Dante gives to the poem. Dante called the poem simply comedy. Divine is the, the, uh, the adjective, the epithet that readers in through uh, the centuries have assigned to it to indicate both what struck them as a sublime quality of this text and also the content. It deals, after all, the fundamental theme of the poem is the encounter of a pilgrim, an ordinary man, who you'll see lived uh, uh, in the 13th century and the 14th century, uh, and who imagines this journey to God. So it's divine also because of this particular content. It's, the, it's, it's a journey, it's, it's, uh, it's a quest for nothing less than uh, seeing God face to face and come back to talk about it. Not just seeing God and be overwhelmed by it, dazzled by it, as probably is the, uh, what we know and it's most of the, the tradition about visionary literature. This is really about writing the poem about this fundamental experience. So we'll be reading this poem. And if I had to give you uh, something of uh, a genre, it's very difficult to, sc to speak of genre. Is it an epic? Uh, is it an autobiography? Is it a romance? Uh, I think it's all of the things above, of, it's all, all of these things. And probably the best way to talk about it is that it is an encyclopedia. What does the word mean? Uh, the word means a circle of knowledge. It's an old classical idea. Uh, it was made, I could tell you, it was made available in our times in the, in, in, uh, in by an architect by the name of Vitruvius, who wrote actually, uh, and it talked about encyclopedia. It really means this, as I said, the circle of knowledge in the sense that to know you have to have a point of departure and that that point of departure will take you along all the various disciplines of uh, uh, the so-called liberal arts and then they take you right back to where you started. The beginning and the end in a liberal education will have to coincide. You are going to find out things that now you will see with a different view, from a different standpoint, a different perspective. Dante writes an encyclopedia, uh, which also means uh, an ordering of the tradition of uh, exactly the so-called liberal arts. What are the liberal arts? Why are they called liberal? They're called liberal to distinguish them from the so-called mechanical arts. This is an old medieval distinction. And they're called liberal also because the aim of these arts is to free us. It's as if knowledge has in itself the power to give us some kind of freedom. Free us from all sorts of, uh, from various sorts of tyranny. The tyranny of action, above all. The tyranny of having to do things with your hands that would distract you from the great aims. And great aims are theory, contemplation, uh, thinking. Uh, so the liberal arts, what are these liberal arts? The liberal arts are so-called the arts of words. They distinguish them between arts of words and arts of number. The arts of words are the, 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 the grammar, fundamental, which encompasses also poetry and history. They are uh, dialectics and rhetoric. Rhetoric, the art of persuasion. Dialectics being the art of uh, deciding what the truth of a statement may be. It's really the most difficult of these arts. And then there are the arts of numbers. The arts of numbers, arithmetic, geometry, music, it's based on rhythm or number, and then astronomy. The aim of these liberal arts would be ethics, it would be also uh, theology, metaphysics, and then theology. This is the way the Divine Comedy is actually structured, as I'm going to show you as we're going to read this, uh, the poem. 